In this video, we will solve stress problem. Problem number one, we have a lamp. Mass is 80 kilogram and it's supported by two rods. The support is not symmetrical. Well, maybe due to the position of this lamp. Well, both roads are made from the same material but their diameters are 10 millimeters and 8 millimeters. And the question is, they like us to determine the average normal stress in these rods. The first thing we have to do is to draw the free body diagram in point B. Here, the forces acting are the weight of the lamp, the BC force, the force on the rod BA, and if you write sigma FX is zero, you take the X and Y coordinates, sigma FY is zero, you get two equations and two unknowns. Here the angle is given, here the slope is given by a triangle 3, 4, 5, so if you write the two equilibriums, then you find that the force BC is 395 and the force BA is 632. The next step is to calculate the stresses in rod BC, force BC, divided by the cross-sectional area of BC. BC has a section, a diameter of 8 millimeters. So this is its radius in meters. So the result is 7.86 megapascals. The same for the rod BA. FBA divided by the cross-section area of BA. Here the diameter is 10 millimeters and it's 0 0.005 meters. Here the stress is 8.0. Fire. Okay, this is what is looked for, but if you look at this simple design, you see that the diameters of the two rods are selected so that in both rods, which have the same material, the stresses are very, very close. That means this design is a good design and both roads rods are under uh, nearly the same stresses and they have the same factor of safety. Next step, we have a wooden board, 150 thickness, 50 millimeters, and the rod applied horizontally is 2 kilonewton compression. But if you look closer to this wooden board, we see that the fibers are oriented, the wood fibers are oriented at 30 degrees. So the question is, find the normal and the average shear stress in the wood fibers. Okay. What we have to do is make a cut here and have this. And in this Free body diagram, the forces are the acting 2 kilonewtons, a shear force in the cut surface, and a normal force in the cut surface. So if we take, take components x prime and y prime like that, and write down the equilibriums for fx prime and fy prime, you see that in the x prime the acting force va and in this direction we have the component of two kilonewton which is in the negative direction and the cosinus and here you can easily find that vaa is 1.732 well the same you do for the y axis here we have the normal acting force and 
the component of the two kilonewton. That's two sine 30 minus the normal force. You can find the normal force on this cut surface. Another important point is when you cut here and then your surface becomes not the same surface when you cut perpendicular to the force. Here I have to determine this length. The width is the same. It's 50 millimeters or 0.05 meters. And this length is 0.15 divided by sine 30. And the area of this cut surface is 0.015 meters square. Next, well, the average sigma, normal force divided by the area. And considering uh, the units, the result is 66.7 kilopascals. The average shear stress, shear force divided by the same area, it's 111 kilopascals. Well, another problem. Here we have a wooden board. And in the wooden board, there is a hole. And this hole will be fitted to a pin in the wall. Okay, so when you do this, well, there will be critical sections where we have shear stresses. The first shear stress is the shearing of the pin, which is somewhere here. And another important critical surface is the surface in the wood. Imagine this dark area. And if this 40 millimeter dimension is too small, then you can pull out the rod by having shear in these two planes. The question is, the diameter of the steel pin is given. And the question is to determine the average shear stresses in the pin over here and in the ABC plane of the wooden board over here. So let's start with the pin. Well, the force is 5 kilonewton and the area, well, the diameter is given. This is the radius. And so we can find easily that the shear stress in the pin in the critical section is 63.7 megapascals. Next, when this part of wood is cut due to shear in the plane ABCD, then we'll have to calculate the average shear stress, shear force divided by the area. This shear force we have taken five kilonewtons by divided by two because there are two areas which should be cut at the same time. 2,500 newton divided by this area. Well, it has 40 to 20, 40 to 20 in meters. Then the average shear stress in the wood is 3.12. Well, you see, if you have a board of this geometry and you apply this force, well, in the pin, a shear stress 63, in the wood, a shear stress 3.12 is acting. So you have to select your materials so that the strength of the materials are higher than these values. Well, another interesting problem. You see here we have a part. It goes through a hole and is supported by these two 
parts the acting force is 20 kilonewtons and the question is so how should i select the diameter d so that this part will not rupture due to tensile force how should i select the diameter t so that this parts this parts or over here these surfaces do not cut under shear forces okay we have to determine the minimum diameter d and the minimum thickness t if the materials allowable normal is 60 megapascals and the allowable shear is 35 megapascals okay first the diameter the force is 20,000 newtons and the allowed shear stress is 60 megapascals or 60 10 to the 6 newton per meter square here you find the area for this section and if you know the area you can determine the diameter of this area and it is 20.6 meter so the minimum diameter should be 20.6 so that there will be no rupture so that that the allowed normal stress will not be exceeded next the thickness well this area well this area well the circumference is what 2 pi r times the thickness t gives you this area as you see what we have to do is take the force divided by the allowable shear stress and find that area that area must be 0.57 meter square and this should be equal to 2 p r t as i have shown over here so if you put these two equations together and take out the thickness t you find that this thickness should be minimum 4.55 millimeter so that no shearing will occur in this critical section this again was a design problem the geometry was given only some dimensions were missing the materials were given we have calculated with our knowledge of stresses the necessary minimum dimensions well the last problem well you see here we have a wooden part 3000 newtons is applied well this will cause compression where in this area which is defined by ab and in this area in this area which is defined by bc well we have to determine the average compressive stresses along these areas another problem is when you apply this force well as you see this area well if this area is not big enough there may be shear in this area which area the horizontal plane defined by adb so we have to find the shear stress in this plane so that was our problem let's start to solve the free body 300 newtons well these are the forces acting one over here and one over here so if you write down the equilibrium in the x and y 
So you find that it's sigma fx sigma y equal to zero. You find that FAB is 1800, FBC is 2400 newtons. So it's very simple. Then we have to determine the force which causes shear in that plane. For this, well, we you see we have determined this force as 1800. This force is acting, so the shear stress should be the same. And we also have now the shear force in plane ADB. Now I can calc I can calculate the stresses first the compressive stresses where in this plane force divided by this area in this plane force divided by this area these are the two compression stresses well i can put a negative or can write down that it's compression but as you see i have stated that these are compression next the shear stress in adb the force was 1800 the area is this area 75 times 40 and the shear stress acting is 0.6 newton per square millimeter Okay, these were some simple stress problems we have solved in this video. Well, these are actually a design application which helps us to determine some unknown dimensions. Thank you for listening.